A very good afternoon, guys. Jazz here from Jazz Real Estate Eview Group in Point Cook. I hope you guys are doing great. The reason for me making this video today, slash rant, is around building inspections and building inspections when purchasers put an offer against on, on your property. Now, sorry, building inspectors, but again, I'll definitely have a go at some of you um, because what we found in the industry here is some of the building inspectors have a business practice where they'll go really hard on the vendors and mention things on the report which could potentially help the purchasers to renegotiate on the contract price because what generally happens is that when a vendor sells a property the contract's been signed and some of the real estate agents having probably a rush or adrenaline to notify other buyers that the property has gone under offer without understanding that until it's unconditional, the deposits were received, that they may need to go back to other purchases. So it's really, really important for the agent to have a maturity level and in intellect, that they keep the mouth shut and until the deposits received and the contract's unconditional. The way we do it, we keep it very, very secret. Again, it's not about trickery, it's, it's about protecting our vendor's interest. Because in case if our contracts fall through, we may need to go back to the second highest purchase or the other purchases in a way that they don't realize that what has happened because there's different ways to do it in a, in a legal manner. Now, some building inspectors would perhaps try to put things into the report so the purchasers can actually go back to the vendors through the agents or the conveyances to renegotiate on price. And some vendors get into the situation where they got they get stuck. They can't go back to the other purchasers. They might feel like, well, it's better we renegotiate with this purchaser. There might be something wrong with my property and let's get the sale happening. Now, that's where the good real estate agents come into play, where they understand or have an understanding around the building and construction side of it as well, and have good connections and network around the other building inspectors or, prof or building professionals to get a second opinion. We had a scenario recently where a building inspector tried to go major on the condition of the house, major defect. However, the property did not have any major defects. We went really hard and made sure that building inspector does have a sleep last night um, because it's not acceptable and we don't tolerate such kind of acts from the building inspectors. Now, the purchasers in the scenario that perhaps change their mind or in general, let's keep it in general, let's not target one particular purchaser. Purchasers can generally either change their mind and use these conditions against the vendors or to walk away from the contract, right? And depending on how a special condition is mentioned, this is how sometimes we do it. Obviously, there's different ways, but one of the ways is that once an agent writes a subject to building inspection condition, generally they tick off general conditions on the contract itself. However, that still may lead the purchaser um, into a pathway where they can walk away from the contract if at all a building inspector does something cheeky on the report. Now, what we do is in our contracts that the building inspection contracts go like this. This contract is subject to building and pest inspection or building inspection the purchaser must organize a building inspection within three days of offer acceptance. The purchaser agrees to organize a licensed building inspector and a building professional at that current time. The building inspection must be completed and a report must be handed over to the agent and the vendor within one hour if a major structural defect of an existing nature is found. The building inspector must notify and advise a factual information around the major structural defect. The purchaser in that event must organize a structural engineer's report at their expense and provide a copy of the report to the vendor. However, at the same time, we also write, the purchaser must provide the vendor reasonable time to organize an assessor, independent assessor, building inspector slash structural engineer to assess that report and or their property before this contract may come to an end. However, again, guys, this is not a legal advice. This is what our solicitors in the past have advised us. And that has protected a lot of our vendors. We've seen a lot of times where some agents would just write a word defect or major defect, 
whereby sometimes it's very easy for the purchasers to walk away. It just comes down to the point of having a trust within the purchasers and the vendor that they'll do the right thing as well. However, when a purchaser, a buyer buys a property, sometimes the buyer remorse kicks in. They jump onto the computer or they find, start looking at the sales, start looking at other properties. And it's a common thing where people think they've paid too much. Whereas we all know, if you look back five years before, we think we should have bought two properties at that time. So it's always the moment they're in, they react according to that, which is human nature. It comes down to the point of choosing an agent you like and trust, an agent who's got your interest at heart and someone who's got knowledge maturity level to make sure your sale and your home is well protected. Here at Jazz Real Estate EV Group, we have professionals who have intellect, maturity, to make sure that your asset is in safe hands. If you have any questions, if you're on the market, if you are dealing with some sort of situation like that, please feel, feel free to reach out, would love to help. My number is 04354-68689. I'll take off from for today. If you have any questions, guys, please feel free to reach out, would love to help. Thank you and have a lovely day. Bye-bye.